So welcome to this video about uh, the D600 ultrasonic scaler. Um, I, over the next 20 minutes or so, are gonna show you that this is a very, very versatile piece of equipment and it's well built and it's so well built that it probably resists a nuclear attack. Um, this unit was given to me by uh, Daniel at Toothsaver, so if you're new UK, head over to there, it's got all your endodontic needs, it's a fantastic uh, website and the customer service is just out of this world. This unit retails for £549 and let's get on with the unboxing of this unit. So this is a blind opening of this D600 ultrasonic scaler by Woodpecker or DTE. My first impressions of this is quite a substantial box, isn't it? You know, um, when I was told I was getting sent this, I wasn't expecting such a large box. And, and, and also you notice the box has got a nice bit of quality to it as well. So let me just get something to open this up and let's have a little look. Ooh, oh, well, I like this. So it opens up like so. So I suppose if you're gonna keep it in the box, that's a quite a nice kind of um, lid that you can have there. So when you, when you do open it up, um, you know, you're not, you're not sort of pulling it out the side, it's a bit of a pain. So first things first, what have we got? Tip book. Ooh, oh, I like that. So this looks like the, um, you've got all the different tips that Woodpecker do, and then a sort of instruction manual for each tip as well, which is, that's fantastic, isn't it? I've never seen anything like that before. Brilliant, perfect. And we've got uh, some sort of instruction manual. And then we've got the unit itself. So, uh, do you know what? I was actually gonna get a, um, I was actually gonna get a box for this, but actually I'm probably gonna keep it in this box. Cause that's quite, um, you know, it's everything's there for you to, 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 to get out. So I believe this is to um, plug directly into a, 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 um, a dental unit. So you don't need to necessarily fill up the um, water uh, tank specifically. Um, I know my chair has this, but uh, I'm not too sure if it's really kind of um, in the correct position for me to use this because the, 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 the plug for this is on one side of the chair and then the, the sort of ca cabinet that it's gonna sit on is on the other side. So it's probably, I'm probably gonna use the, uh, the, the water tank itself. So what else have we got? We've got the, ultrasonic tip and it's got a very very specific end on this so I know that my ultrasonic on my chair if I can squeeze it in there it looks kind of like this oh that needs a bit of a clean doesn't it and this one is actually this is a this is a, a kind of ultrasonic tip that I've used in my other practice it's a bit of a pain having different ultrasonic tips because you know if you sort of one's going through or you know say god forbid this breaks you, you can't easily um add this onto you know another unit a great thing about having an ultrasonic tip which is unique is that this is not going to be stolen by another surgery or another practice Th this is really going to stay with this and as it goes through um, the autoclave and you know the, the, the decon nurses looking, they'll know that this belongs to this particular unit. So I suppose you've got that into consideration. We've got the uh, the tightener. We've got about about fifty thousand of these in the practice. Um, we've got the foot pedal. And the power cable, obviously. Oh, there goes the foot pedal. And we have, oh, this is interesting. So this looks like a kind of a, a maintenance. Um, this is fantastic, this is brilliant. So we've got a, an extra spare light for the, um, for the ultrasonic unit. And then we've got sort of 
O-rings and I'm not entirely sure what this is. I'm assuming what this is is, is the tightener for the tips. Um, but I but I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to look into the uh, into the instruction manual for that. But I love this. This is fantastic. This is kind of um, sort of future proofing the the unit itself itself. So this is brilliant. This is really really good. And we've got the um, water tank here. Um, you know, I was I was a bit worried actually that the box was humongous. And then when we opened it up, the the, the unit itself would be humongous as well. But actually in this case it's. It's not too bad, it's not too bad. Let's pull this out and have a look at this. You know, it just, it just feels quality. You know, it's, it just feels well made. Um, I remember I bought a, uh, like a sort of, it's not Woodpecker, I know it's not Woodpecker, it's DT, but it's owned by Woodpecker. I remember buying a Woodpecker um, Apex Locator about eight years ago, and, it, and I think it was when Woodpecker weren't so well known then. And um, do you know what, it's probably one of the best Apex Locators I've ever had. Really, really fantastic, super cheap, but this is, this feels like a solid, solid unit. I can't wait to get that all plugged in and see. And then, it, as soon as I opened the box, instantly saw all of these little tiny boxes and thought, wow, these are not all the tips you get with it. So let me see, let me see. This is exciting, because I love a good ultrasound tip. Look at all these. These are fantastic, lovely. Oh dear, oh dear, look at all these tips. This is unbelievable. So what type of tips we've got? So we've got a couple of, I think that that's a perio tip, but I'm not entirely sure. Fantastic, I absolutely love this tip. This is like a kind of ball-ended um, diamond tip, which I use a lot for um, opening up access and also sort of looking for canals and things. Um, this, this is another one I use for instrument removal and looking for canals. And again, this is kind of like a sort of a generic sort of tip that we use for sort of perio. Another one of those tips looking for access canals. Another generic tip. So this looks like some kind of um, ultrasonic activation tip. Um, I personally aren't keen on using these just because I've been told that they tend to fracture inside the teeth and I've got a little bit of an um, obsession with um, worrying about fracturing tips and there's another one there and this is another fantastic little diamond tip we use for access so uh, you know I just I can't really get over this this is a blind opening by the way I've never opened this before um, you get all those tips you get sort of, kind of like sort of maintenance kind of um, pack which is I think that's really really good that's fantastic and then you get solid unit you know it's it, it just it just feels quality you know you feel like that's gonna last for ages all the knobs are nice and big and you know they don't look very um, like they break easy all that looks nice and solid so overall first impression super 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 happy so I think what we need to do is we need to get this um, all set up and have a little have a little go with the controls and things so actually um, I found out uh, the difference between um, these two instruments. This indeed is a um, sort of a tip tightener onto the, the handpiece itself and it's pretty obvious really and it's something that I've noticed uh, for, for a long while with my other unit is that say you want to screw this tip onto this unit so um, what you would use is this kind of um, sort of tightening tool here and it sort of slots onto there quite nicely and you can squeeze it on and then and then when you pull it off you um, it sort of captures the the tip itself and then that is autoclaved um, and the great thing about this is it kind of protects the sharpness of the tip um, within this kind of unit here so it's kind of like a um, sort of a health and safety thing the thing is, if you try and tighten um, this tip onto this unit using that, you'll notice that the tip is too long 
for it to fit within the sides. You can kind of see there that it's too long. So actually you could slip that over and, and tighten it. And uh, what you have to use is this kind of um, sort of wrench, as, like, as we like to call it. And um, it just tightens nicely. Um, I suppose the, the only issue with um, the only issue with using a wrench rather than th this unit is obviously this is much sharper than that tip there, and it would have been nice to have something that slipped over that and sort of protect yourself from any sort of um, uh, needle stick injury. But I suppose this would have to be quite large for it to to go over the top. The wrench has also got a um, sort of a, like a ruler on there. I'm not too sure what the ruler's for, but I wonder if it's just to check if like, you know, um, if you feel like you've broken the end of this file, uh, of this tip here, and you wanna just see if there's any pieces missing. Um, I, I use these quite a lot, and these ends are really, really friable, and obviously, um, if you use it on too much of a high energy, they, they do break. So if we look at uh, setting up the unit itself, um, you'll notice that the uh, handpiece cable actually is fixed into the, the side of the unit and that can't be removed. Um, the handpiece has got a, quite a complicated kind of end and sometimes you kind of look at yourself trying to oh, it matters. but actually if you look on the handpiece it's like a little little dot there and then there's a dot on there and all you've got to do is marry them up and it fits quite nicely there I think that's quite a nice touch and um, this sort of thing where the handpiece fits onto is really really nice I've got another unit a different practice and this is solid and I'm, I'm always trying to sort of balance it on there and it keeps falling but this one you can slot it on nicely hold it nicely and you can just pull it straight off so I, I really really like this kind of rubbery effect here that holds the handpiece that's pretty good so to connect the um, power cable obviously you've got the power bit here and if you look at it from behind uh, the power cable uh, fits into this bit here and the um, pedal is another little cable and it's got like a kind of a, a marrying sort of uh, like a little lug there which helps you orientate the plug in the right way and that fits in nicely and then obviously there's like a little on and off switch button there and finally uh, the Tank. Tank's pretty easy. Obviously you fill, fill it up and then it just slots on like so. And what you'll notice is when you first use this and you fill the tank up, it will take quite a long time for you to, to press the button and for the water to come out. But once you've used it for the first time, um, it doesn't take as long for the water to come out. So if we kind of look at the unit itself, if we just turn it on at the back, what you'll notice is you have just a few settings. So you've got the setting for water or not water, okay? So um, if you are using the tank, it's this. And if you're using uh, the mains water, then you press this button. And I think what's really, really nice about this unit is it's white clean. So this is, there's, there's, there's no sort of nooks and crannies to hold any dirt there or any bacteria. So this, this is really, really nice. Um, what I would say is around the side here is a tiny little knob which um, affects the, uh, the, the, how much water comes out the end. And I'll show you that later. So that's the water. Then we have three settings, okay? So we've got G, which is general purpose. We've got P, which is perio. And then we've got E, which is endodontics. And then you have this kind of sliding scale um, of uh, ultrasonic energy intensity. And it's really, really nice. It, the, 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 the touch screen is really, really responsive. So sometimes, like I've got an apex locator, you kind of have to like sort of press the button like in a sort of, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a quite firm way, but this is just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing that very, very lightly. I think that's a really cool touch. So I think one of the first questions I asked with this unit before I received it was, can I use my Endo Success uh, burrs with this with this unit? Because you know this is is not only a really really useful 
uh, bursa, but incredibly expensive. So what you've got to think to yourself is, um, you know, does your existing equipment work with a, a new piece of equipment? And I was told, yes, it does work. And in fact, um, what you'll notice is that these do fit onto here and they do fit snugly. Now, um, I don't know if you've ever put the wrong tip on the wrong on a wrong scaler, it, it ruins the handpiece. Okay, usually um, sometimes the tips uh, ruined, but usually it's the handpiece that goes. And obviously, if you think to yourself, this is um, you know expensive bit of kit, you don't want to be breaking this. But this fits on really really well. But what you will notice is that these Endo Success tips have got uh, like a colour banding. And when you look at this uh, this unit here, it doesn't have the same colour banding system. So you'll notice on this other unit here, there are different colours. So there's, it goes from red to blue to yellow to green. And this corresponds to the intensity of the ultrasonic action. And um, when we look at our Endo Success tips, they have a different colour coded banding system on. So this is a um, like a kind of a sort of a really really fine tip, and you'll notice it's yellow, and yellow is quite low on the intensity of the uh, ultrasound caption. Uh, but if we take um, another tip, this is a post removal tip, so it needs a lot of energy. So this is going to be quite high up on the uh, on the system here. So what you've got to do is you've got to kind of use your common sense. So yellow is obviously on the lower end of the uh, sort of energy rating for this ultrasonic tip. Um, it's not the lowest, but what you've got to be super careful is, and if, I don't know if you can kind of see this, is that this tip is well used. And in fact, um, it's well used because it's, it's broken away. And if I'm being really honest with myself, probably I've used this with too higher energy, not with this particular machine. So basically, if I get another tip, this is a one that's kind of brand newish. Notice the, the, the difference in height. So the, the, the sort of end of this has come off because it's been used so much. And that's what you've got to be careful of. You don't want to make this too, um, too high energy or you'll start smashing your tips away. And you know, these tips can be quite expensive. Um, obviously, I live in the UK and I believe these tips are about 80 pounds each, which is a hell of a lot of money. Okay, so that's just something to take into consideration. Another thing you need to take into consideration is obviously um, these buttons here. So this is kind of for a, a general tip or sort of general use. That's like sort of hand scaling or uh, sorry, um, using an ultrasonic scaler. And then you've got the uh, perio tip. But, but if you're using it for endodontics specifically, you want to put it on the E. And you'll actually notice that the, uh, the intensity of 10 on E is much less than the intensity of 10 on the uh, general purpose use. So I think the last thing to do really is talk about all these different tips that we get with this uh, machine. And no, make no mistake, there is tons and tons of these tips. Um, and the first one that I wanna demonstrate is, is this one here. So this one is a really, really useful uh, instrument and it's kind of like a, a torpedo shaped instrument and it's used to very, very gently trough out um, dentine, you know, sometimes maybe work out some straight line access, um, open up canals as well. So, so super, super, super useful um, tip. So the second tip I want to talk about is this um, kind of ball ended tip. And in fact, I would say I use this um, more than any other ultrasonic tip. Um, just because it is got like a, uh, like a, a narrow shank on it. And if you see here, you can see just a little bit more um, when you're trying to sort of remove any kind of, any dentin or anything like that. But what, what you will notice is, is if you use it for long enough, um, you will uh, create a lot of dentin debris. Okay, so what would be um, another tip in this pack, which is really, really useful, are these types of tips. So these are like um, normal ultrasonic tips, 
but in fact you'll notice that that looks like a normal ultrasonic tip but this one if i can open it is um a little bit thinner and, it, and, and i suppose in our practice they kind of call it like a like a bit of a perio tip and what that does is it kind of obviously it uh, removes um all the dentin debris but it's also quite a high energy kind of um uh, cleaner of the cavity floors so another really really useful thing uh, for this for, for the use for this tip is actually looking for canal orifices weirdly enough when i was setting up for this um, video i was just having a little play around with these tips and actually you can see here that i'm using a quick succession of the ball ended um diamond tipped ultrasonic uh, along with the, just a normal tip and I actually find um, an MB2 canal. So with this, especially with MB2s, they're really, really sort of small and you can kind of see where the tip is and also you can sort of very, very gently remove some of the dentin. Two other tips, these are really, really sort of fine, thin um, needle type tips. And these are used for obviously removal of dentin. So sometimes when I'm looking for sclerose canals, but also what they can be used for is to activate um, uh, fractured instruments. So you'll see here that the fractured instrument is um, being activated with this, with this very, very, very um, thin tip. Um, there is an option to have a smaller tip like so. Um, and you just use it for, for, for however you please, really. This is another tip which is included into the, um, into the D600, and this is an irrigant activation tip. Now you'll notice here on um, this extracted tooth that I am just placing this tip um, passively into the canal, and then I'm just gonna activate it. And you'll notice that if you've been irrigating for a long, long while, and you just hear it gets nice and clear, you put one of these activation tips into the canal and activate it, you'll notice that it releases a lot of the smear layer and a lot of stuff that's been um, sort of adhered to the, the canal wall. You'll see here as well that you, there's only a tiny, tiny little bit of a vibration. Um, I am not a huge fan of these only because I've been told that they separate very, very easily and I've got no um, evidence to back that up. They're probably fine. I've just heard a lot of people um, don't, don't tend to like these. And um, the final tip is just this perio tip. I, I, I was um, going to uh, demonstrate this tip, but I, I'm, I'm mainly endo. Um, so it'll probably stay in this box so the big question is, would I buy this unit? Because I, I was actually given this unit. And after having this ultrasonic scaler for about two months now, I can solidly say that th this is a very, very, very nice unit. And I, and I think it's just, it's wipeable. The, it, the build quality is so solid that I feel like if um, it, it would it would resist a nuclear attack, it's it's solid. And I think if you buy this unit, you you, you know it's 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 not going to break anytime soon. This is gonna this is gonna last for ages. So, so yeah, I would say buy this. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, buy it from Tooth Savers. It's at the moment it's five hundred and forty nine pounds. This is the the person who gave him this unit, and. I'd like to say finally, if you really like our um, uh, videos, like and subscribe and comment underneath and let me know what you think. If you buy this, let me know what you think and let everyone else tell me what you think as well. So great. I will speak to you soon.